is to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. You are our God and our Lord. Thank you for bringing us this far in time, even in this year, 2023. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the testimonies we have recorded. Be exalted forevermore. We look up to thee. Speak to us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. God be praised. Again, I welcome you to church, to service. Amen. It pleased the Lord to open my ears to hear what he is saying in this season. And what he says to one, he says to all. Hallelujah. What he's saying today. And I would like to read from where I wrote same, which he said to me, the time of men is in my hands. I, the Lord, determines time and seasons. I place men in time and in space according to my will and ordained purpose. I make sweet from bitter and make bitter from sweet. I, the Lord, is the maker of the heavens and the earth. In the coming days, saith the Lord, I shall manifest myself to you both as restorer, healer, and as helper, both as Jehovah Rufeka and Ebenezer. I shall restore time and health to you. Also, I shall be your rock of help. I shall be the wind under your wings, the strength of your arm, the speed of your feet. You are restorer of time and you are help. I shall be to you till the end of this year, even beyond. Welcome to the time you call October. Rafeka and Ebenezer, you will experience. Hallelujah. I shall be to you from now till the end of the year, even beyond, from now till the end of the year, even beyond, my God. The year has 12 months, and these 12 months you can break down into quarters of 4-4, four, four. hallelujah. This day, October the 1st, we step right into the first day of the last four of the 12. And he says, from this day, I will manifest myself to you, both as Rufeka and Ebenezer, till the end of the year. In other words, for this last lap, of four months in the year, God has chosen to reveal to us himself as Jehovah Rufeka and as Ebenezer, a stone of help. Hallelujah to Jesus. I am excited. 
I hope you are as well. The word of the Lord to us is what I have just read out to you. And I want to believe that your amen will echo loud because amen is be it unto me as it is being spoken. Amen means I agree and I accept that which the Lord is saying. If it is the Lord that has spoken, let it therefore be unto me as he has said. Rufeka and the Beniza, he would be to you in this season. Hallelujah. You know, when men run the relay race, four by four relay, the man who ends the race is key to their winning the race for the team winning the race or for the team losing the race. The last moments of any tight game is the decider of the game. The last lap, the last moments is what determines who wins or who loses. We came into the year with so much expectation and hope, believing for all things. Hear me, no matter what you have experienced so far in the year, I want to announce to you that you have come to the very last lap, the decider of the year. Men could make gain at the beginning, but at the last lap, lose all that they have gained. Men could have made losses and not have achieved as it were, but at the last lap, they gain everything they, ought, they would have enjoyed or gained from the beginning. So the last lap is crucial. The last lap is very crucial. And in this crucial moment, thus saith the Lord, I will be a stone of help to you. And I will be to you Jehovah Rofeka, the healer and restorer of time. What intrigued me the most in that which I just read, and I would like to read again, in that which I just read, a portion of it, that which intrigued me most, is when I heard God say that in this season, my God, he said, I shall manifest myself. He said, in the coming days, I shall manifest myself to you, both as restorer, healer, and as helper. Both as Jehovah Rapha and Ebenezer, and he went further to say, "I shall restore time and health to you, and I shall also be helper to you." Psalm one two one said, "I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence my help comes." My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Hear me. God's hands shall be revealed in your life. In this last lap, God's hands shall be revealed in your life, in your situations as Jehovah Rapha and as Ebenezer. In the name of Jesus Christ, God is saying that he will restore to you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. And today I want to quickly talk about, uh, on the I will speak on the topic, when God introduces himself. Hallelujah. When God introduces himself, God is fond of making introductions. Yes, when there is a grand entry of an individual, there is need for an introduction. When someone shows up anywhere where he is not known, there is need for an introduction. Every time we stand before people, 
we introduce ourselves. When you introduce yourself, you want the people to know you. When you introduce yourself, you want the people to be uh, abreast, as it were, uh, with information about you and who you are. Hallelujah. When God introduces himself from time immemorial, God have been in the business of revealing himself to men. In Genesis chapter 1 and sorry, chapter 17 and verse 1, he said to Abraham, his name was Abraham. And then in Genesis chapter 17, he showed up before Abraham and he said, I am. I'm El Shaddai. He introduced himself as El Shaddai. He said to Abraham, I am the Lord, the God Almighty. And from that revelation in that encounter, Abraham's name was changed from Abraham to Abraham. Hallelujah. He showed up before Moses. In, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14, actually he sent Moses on Aaron and Moses was like, who do I tell them? How do I introduce you to the people? And he said in verse 14 of chapter 3 in the book of Exodus, he said to Moses, say to them, I am that I am. I am that I am have sent you. Hallelujah. God introduces himself even to men. Amen. And I found out from scripture that even angels introduced themselves. Gabriel showed up before, before uh, 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 the high priest in the book of Luke, Zechariah, uh, when he gave Zechariah the message of John being born, uh, of his wife, Elizabeth, that had been barren, having to have a child. And uh, Zechariah asked the question, how do I know this? He said, I am Gabriel. I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The same showed up before, uh, before Daniel. He introduced himself. God is in the business of introducing himself. When God introduces himself, he wants to reveal who he is. He wants to reveal his ability. He wants to reveal his nature. He wants to show forth himself. Introductions are important because by introductions, we know who we are dealing with. By introduction, you understand the person and the personality you are dealing with. By introduction, you can relate with who is talking to you. By introduction, you are at home with who you are with. When men stand before men, they introduce themselves. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Men stand before men and ask, do you know who I am? Um, they introduced themselves. Uh, the people sent messengers to John the Baptist in the book of John's gospel and say, who are you? Tell us who you are. Introduce yourself to us. Even Jesus said to his disciples, who do men say that I am? I need to know what they know about me. Who do they say that I am? And Peter speaking out, he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, flesh and blood, I've not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven have done so. Hallelujah to Jesus. When God introduces himself, I found out in scriptures that God made a grand introduction. And even in this month, he is introducing himself by that grand introduction. Hallelujah. God is introducing himself to us by that grand introduction. When when God introduces himself, hallelujah to Jesus. I found out in scriptures that when God introduces himself, number one, he wants to manifest as that which he introduced. <laughs> When God introduces himself, he wants to manifest, he wants to show himself as that which is introduced. Every time God introduced himself in the Bible, it was a manifestation of that identification. Am I communicating? It was a manifestation. It was a showing to the individual that he is introducing himself to as a manifestation. That name manifested. That name revealed. Hallelujah. When he says, I am a healer, just check, he is healing. When he says, I'm a provider, check, he is providing. Hallelujah. 
by the revelation I Abraham caught of God. He called him the provider. The Lord shall provide for himself. Amen. Whenever God introduces himself, he wants to manifest himself as that which is introduced. As that identity or identification that is being identified at that moment. That is what he does. Number two, when God introduces himself, he wants to show his ability. Hallelujah. God wants to show his ability as what is introduced in this situation. When you find yourself in a situation and God introduces himself in that situation, he wants to show himself in the midst of that situation, my God. He wants to show himself as introduced in the midst of that situation hallelujah hallelujah and i'll come back to this very quickly uh, and very soon uh, when we will look at the book of exodus chapter number 15 where he revealed himself as jehovah Rophaker. hallelujah when he reveals himself he is revealing himself in the situation uh, every time and most of the times god have revealed himself to men he revealed himself or rather introduced himself he introduced himself in the situation in the circumstance where with they have found themselves in the situation of mesh as it were that they have found themselves in that circumstance and in that situation god makes a grand entry god makes an introduction of himself to at Tend to that situation that his ability as introduced will be made manifest in that situation. Hallelujah. Number three, when God introduces himself, when God introduces himself, he wants you to henceforth know him experientially, my God. He wants you to have an experiential knowledge. He wants you to have a deepened knowledge of him. That your knowledge of him will not be superficial, my God. You know, when you hear a thing and when you experience a thing the knowing is different <laughs> when you hear a thing yes you have a mental knowledge of that thing you know it in your mind you know it as spoken it, it, it looks a little bit as abstract it looks a little bit yes okay it, it, it sounds more like an information it sounds more like something your mind need to analyze understand regurgitate and assimilate when something comes to you by knowledge your mind first of all assesses it hallelujah to jesus and your mind regurgitates over it and then your mind assimilates it uh, if you if it is too much for your mind to process if it is too much for your mind to uh, assimilate what the mind does most of the times is that the mind shuts out that knowledge as it were uh, but when you experience a thing my god it's more like a practicalization of that when you know a thing by experience when you know something by going through it it becomes personalized it becomes an experiential knowledge it becomes a knowledge that cannot be gainsaid it becomes a knowledge that nothing can controvert in your life my god oh the bible talked about about the man that was healed in the book of John and the people came asking questions that we hear that this man that was born blind that was born deaf and dumb is now well the father of the boy said you people can ask him he is of age he can speak for himself and they asked him is it this Jesus of Nazareth that healed you he said well uh, what I know is that one once I was blind, but now I can see. And what I know is that 
it is this man that made it happen whatever your opinion is about this man you can sit with your opinion by my experience Experience. I know him to be a healer. I know him to be the one that opens blind eyes. I know him to be the one that changes situations. When God introduces himself to a people, he wants you to know him experientially. He wants you to have an experience of him. He wants your knowledge of him to be deepened. He wants your knowledge of him to move away from the sensual, to move away from the abstract to come into to come into the practicality of knowledge to come into what you can relate with what you can witness ah knowing him experientially makes you a material witness of who he says he is when he introduces himself as the rock of help and you experience him as such my god then nobody can take it away from you but that experience makes you know him personally it brings your knowledge of it concretizes your knowledge of him hallelujah when god introduces himself when god introduces himself in a situation he wants you to know that he can handle the situation he wants you to see his ability in dealing with that situation when god shows up for a man he will usually show up for that man in the middle of a situation my god ah, the apostles and the disciples they were in the middle of the storm they were in the midst of a situation he showed up for them in the book of luke the bible said that he came walking on the water he showed up and revealed himself as the the God who can walk on water Hi. and they knew him like they never knew him before they knew him therefore as he who can walk on water ha 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 Peter the Bible said toiled all night and couldn't catch anything he showed up before Peter and said cast your nets cast your nets hallelujah and Peter cast his nets ah uh, not nets Jesus told him cast your nets Peter casted net ha ha and when he saw the multitude of fish that was gathered in his net ah he knew him in a different way there was a new revelation of the man who was standing before him god introduced himself to peter in such a way that no man could take away that testimony from him hallelujah so when god introduces himself he is introducing himself so you can know him experientially so your knowledge of him can be deepened hear me this day he says in from this day fought with going forward till the end of the year he will show up for you he will manifest to you as a restorer of time and health my god he will manifest to you as a restorer of time and health he will manifest to you as helper in this season ah i thought someone will shout and dance indeed ah, hear me child of god god says i will forthwith manifest myself to you as jehovah Rufeka and the beniza hallelujah Amen. when he introduces himself to a people he is introducing himself so that your worship of him can be deepened my god to enrich your worship so you can worship him that is the other reason that is the when he introduces himself to a people he introduces himself so that worship will erupt <laughs> so that there will be an eruption of worship so that your worship can be pure your worship can be worship with knowledge worship with insight worship with experience my god so that your worship can be rich you know the angels worship god and they worship him 
Because they see him, they know him as he is. The way God enables us to know him, even like the angels know him. You see, Gabriel said to Zechariah, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. <laughs> you know, there are many things we do not see and there are many things we do not know, even about this God. So for him to bring you closer in knowledge so that your worship of him will not be superficial, so that your worship, when you worship him, it will come from the depth of your soul so that you will worship with understanding knowing who you are worshiping is by introducing himself is by manifesting in our situations so that when you remember that he manifested to you as jehovah rofika you will bow in worship hallelujah to jesus again in luke chapter 5 when he proved and manifested introduced himself not only as jesus who preaches but as jesus who can cause fish a multitude of fish to gather ah that can cause a man to have a compounded harvest my god what he did with peter was to restore time peter had toyed all night catching nothing and when he introduced himself to peter as the restorer of time as jehovah rofeka in one moment Peter caught fishes that he never caught all his fishing expedition. Yes, because when God restores time for men, he compounds their harvest, my God. He causes you to gain all that you have lost. He causes time to come back to my God. What you would have enjoyed in time past that didn't become, he causes it to come all at once. Peter gathered fish that he never saw god revealed himself as a healer the restorer of wasted years to peter the restorer of time the giver of harvest the healer of situations my god and when peter caught that fish what happened was that peter bowed down and worshiped the Bible said Peter bowed down and worshipped. In fact, he caught so much fish that his net broke. His boat began to sink because he was taking in the harvest. His capacity could not contain the harvest. He called on his friends to come over to help take the harvest. My God, God is about to mesmerize someone in this season so that your worship will be rich. Yes, what evoked what erupted from peter in luke chapter 5 was worship peter immediately bowed down and worshiped and said depart from me for i am a sinner i am a sinner i worship worship rose from peter when thomas had doubted that he rose and told the people when i see him i have to put my fingers to be sure and when jesus showed up before them again and thomas was present and he showed himself to them and said thomas come put your hand i am he what came out of Thomas was my Lord and my God. Worship my Lord. He knew him differently. He saw there was a new introduction of who Jesus was to, to Thomas. And what erupted from within him was worship. When God introduces himself, he wants your worship of him to be rich. When God introduces himself, he wants you to worship him deeper. He wants to take you deeper into the place of worship. Hallelujah to Jesus. In Exodus chapter number 15, if you read it from verse number 22, all the way to verse number 27. It's important you read it from verse number 22 because it is in understanding the story, the situation that they were in before he introduced himself as Jehovah Rofeka that you will begin to appreciate the name Jehovah Rofeka. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, verse 22 of Exodus chapter number 15, led Israel from uh, the Red Sea and they went into the desert of shore 
For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. Verse 26, he said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am Jehovah Rofeka. Hallelujah. I am Jehovah Rofeka. Now, the people had traveled for days and they were thirsty and there was no water for them to drink. Hallelujah. You can imagine the situation. They had traveled, they were thirsty, their cattle were thirsty. You know, there was this thirst and every man's throat was dried. And that was not just that they had traveled and their throats were dried. They were also in the wilderness where there was no water and there was no pasture for them. Hallelujah. And that was the situation they found themselves. Uh, suddenly, as they journeyed, they came to a place called Mara. Mara means bitter. Hallelujah. And what was there in Mara? Suddenly, they saw water. Uh, it looked like hope was revived. You can imagine men and everyone who had been thirsty for three days suddenly finding water and every man rushed to that source of water, to that water to get some drink for themselves. But suddenly, alas, it was something they could not drink. It was something they could not swallow. It was something they could not ingest into their system. You can imagine the disappointment. You can imagine how their faces faded away. The Bible said that they grumbled. They grumbled. They were not happy. Of course, they cried to their leader, Moses. Moses prayed and God gave him an instruction, cast a wood, uh, showed him a tree, cast into that. There, there, there's so much to bring out from that scripture. But, 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 but let me focus on the revelation on the introduction that God made of himself. Hallelujah. Am I communicating? Yeah, yeah there, there are other things to, to share from that story. There are other deep insight, but I wouldn't, I, I will pass. Hallelujah. And then the Bible said that the water became healed. The water became healed as Moses cast that tree. Jesus is the tree of life. Hallelujah. When you introduce Jesus in any bitter situation, things turn around. And I can see God say to us, I bring sweet from bitter and I can make bitter sweet. Hallelujah. He can make bitter sweet and he can make sweet bitter. Hallelujah. And at Mara, as they journeyed and that happened, he showed forth. He showed forth to the people. He brought them to Mara as it were, some would say, to test them. He brought them through a situation, yes, that could be called bitter. I don't know what situation you have found yourself in this period, in this year, as a people, as a nation. Today is even Nigerians' independence. Hallelujah. October the 1st, Nigerians' independence. Amen. And Nigeria as a nation, you have seen a lot. But today, I say to you, Jehovah Rofeka visits with you, O nation. Rofeka is by your door. Things will turn around. He is the healer. He turns bitter to sweet. That was what he did at Mara. The Bible said that he introduced himself. He said, if you walk with me, I will not bring the diseases of the Egyptians upon you, for I am Jehovah Rufeka. Before then, they never knew him as Jehovah Rufeka. They never knew him 
as the Lord that heals. The one who heals. He heals both infirmities. He does not just heal our bodies. He heals situations. He heals other things. He is a healer. He is a wholesome healer. He heals the soul. He heals the spirit. He heals emotional issues. He heals physical sicknesses. He heals bankruptcy. He is a healer. Jehovah Rofeka does not just reveal him as a healer. Beyond healing, as a healer of diseases, as it were. Beyond healing diseases, he heals other things. He heals situations. He heals time. When he heals time, he restores it. Hallelujah. He's a restorer of time. And he says to us, as Jehovah Rofeka, he will restore time to us, my God. He will restore time to you. I don't know what situation you have found yourself in this season. I don't know what circumstance that has beseeched you as a person, as a family, as an individual. Hear ye the word of the Lord. He says, I am Jehovah Rofeka to you. He says, I am Jehovah Rofeka. Nigeria, he is Jehovah Rofeka. America, he is Jehovah Rofeka. Ah, that family that is going through tumor right now. He is Jehovah Rofeka. That business that is going through tumor right now. He is Jehovah Rofeka. Hey, student, your academics is going topsy toppy. He is Jehovah Rofeka. I don't know what situation you may have found yourself. He is Jehovah Rofeka. He's introducing himself to you this day as Jehovah Rofeka, the one who heals. He's not just Rafa but he is Rofeka. Hallelujah to Jesus. He is a restorer of time. He will restore to you time. He will restore to you time. He will restore to you time in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus. And in 1 Samuel chapter number 7, the Bible speaks if you read it from number verse from from verse 7 chapter 7 of first somewhere from verse 7 to verse 12 amen in verse 7 the bible said that the philistines heard that the israelites had assembled in misfair uh, the rulers of the philistines came up to a attack them. I don't know what I've come up to attack you. I don't know what I've been attacking you from left, right, and center. Sometimes some things attack us. We don't even know what is attacking us. Hey, the Philistines came to attack the children of Israel. And when the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us, that he may rescue us from the hand of the Philistines. Then Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it up as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. Verse number 11, the men of Israel rushed out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to a point below Betkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far has the Lord helped us. Hallelujah. Thus far has the Lord helped us. He is our stone of help. And that's the meaning of Ebenezer, the stone of help. The Lord that helps his people. Ah, I don't know what help you need in this season. He says, I will be your Ebenezer. I will manifest to you as Ebenezer. Hey, I will manifest as Ebenezer. I will be the wind under your wings. Hallelujah. The wind that will glide you, that will carry you through. My God, the people of Philistine came against the Israelites at Mizpah. They were gathered and the Philistines drew in battle. God thundered from heaven and routed the Philistines. There was great 
thundering in the camp of the enemy that they were so panicked and routed. They ran helter skelter. They ran everywhere. Did the Bible not say that the enemy will come in one way, but in seven ways it will flee? Hear ye the word of the Lord. The Lord your helper is by your side. He is revealing himself to you in this season, not just as Jehovah Rapha, but as the stone of help. He is your help. He is your helper. Rafaka means healer. It means restorer. It means preserver. He will restore to you the wasted years. He will restore to you the wasted days. In this last lap of the year, in this last quarter of the year, in this last fall of the year, my God, the deciding time, the deciding days of the race in the year 2023, God will surprise you. In this deciding days of the year 2023, he will restore to you the other nine months that have gone by. Ah, he will restore to you time. He will cause to come to pass his word in your life. He will be your help in time of need. Hear me, child of God, in these last four months, he says, I will manifest to you both as Jehovah Rapha and as Ebenezer. Hear ye the word of the Lord. He will turn your bitter to sweet. He will turn your crying to joy. He will turn your tears to tears of joy and laughter. You will laugh and you will rejoice. It's a new season. Rejoice in the Lord your God because he has shown up for you. He showed up for Peter in Luke chapter number 5. Peter didn't know harvest all night. It was a wasted time. It was a wasted toil. But when Rebekah showed up in the scene, he had a net breaking miracle. Be ready because you will testify. Be set because you will testify. For your God, your Father, shall show up for you, introducing himself to you in this season. One, so that you will know him deeper. Two, so that he will manifest himself in your situation in this season. Hallelujah to Jesus. So that you will know him. So that your worship will erupt from the stable of deep knowledge of who he is. He is Jehovah Rapha, and he is your Ebenezer. In this season, that is how you will see him. In this season, that is how he would manifest to you. In this season, that is how he will show his strength in your situation. If you believe it, shout a believe him. Amen. And today we come to the communion table of the Lord. The Bible said that when supper ended, hallelujah to Jesus, we come to the communion table of the Lord. Uh, yes, for every first Sunday, we come to the communion table, hallelujah. For every first Sunday, we come before the Lord, even as a covenant thing, to partake in this covenant meal, in this covenant food, Food. And I want to believe that you have prepared knowing that it is first Sunday. In paraventure, you don't know it. Know it now. Every first Sunday, prepare your bread and prepare your wine. Yes, right there in your house is a covenant practice. Hallelujah. With which the Lord have sealed us. Amen. And when supper was ended, the Bible said he took bread and he blessed it. The same bread that was baked on the streets. He took it and he blessed it. And he said, take this, eat it. This is my body that was broken for you. Thank you, Jesus. We receive your body today. And we come to the table of covenant, to the place of covenant. Hey, concerning the last lap of the year, the last quarter of the year. Hayabadoshka, bantika lo severiataya. Hey, even these days that you have chosen to show for up for us, to show up for us as Jehovah Rapha and as Ebenezer. Lord, we covenant with you in this respect that that will be our experience and that will be our testimony. We eat your body today in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit in remembrance even of that which you have done for us. Thank you, Father. And when supper ended, the Bible said, Aha, he took the cup and he blessed it and said, Take this. 
Drink it. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to this communion table, the place of covenant, by blood. We receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this has become your blood that was shed for us. We become partakers of sin and of the covenants of Jehovah Rophekah and the Beniza, our stone of help, in Jesus' name. You can take, eat, and pray some more for yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jehovah Rafaika is moving in your midst now. As the healer, taking away infirmity and disease from your body. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus, every infirmity that you have labored under departs from your body now in Jesus' name. Let the miracles begin. Let the manifestation begin now. Jehovah Rophaka shows up for you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let he who is our stone of help, Ebenezer, show up for you in your home, show up for you in your place of work, show up for you visiting the works of your hands as your helper. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Adonai. I give you praise. I give you worship. Thank you for the testimonies. To the glory of your name, it begins to roll in. Hallelujah to Jesus. God bless you. And thank you for joining us today. Do well to share this broadcast. Do well to extend the message to as many that you know. That Jehovah God is showing up for them in this last phase of the year as Jehovah Rophekah and the stone of hell. God bless you.